fully managed, right? So we've talked about a few different areas. What does fully managed mean? This means, you know, let's say for instance, you want to drive a car, right? To drive a car, you don't have to understand how to build an engine, right? If, if you had to understand how to build an engine, most people wouldn't drive cars because it's, 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 not, it's not something that people have in their back pocket. They're not mechanics. And so in the same way with serverless is that you're able to drive a car, you're able to run your application at scale globally without having to understand all the little minor details underneath it to make it happen. Because I can tell you that if I went to a DevOps engineer, uh, even if they were world, world class, and I asked them to build AWS from scratch, to build Google Cloud from scratch or Microsoft Azure from scratch and have the scaling capability and the performance mm -hmm. and the optimization at that micro level, it's not gonna happen. And so what the benefit is, is that we can leverage the thousand engineers at Google or the thousand engineers at AWS to then build these cars, these race cars that then me or Josh Proto or company X, they can be the drivers of that car and they can go 200 miles per hour, where if they had to build it from scratch and then do it, not only are you delayed, but also you're only moving 60 or 50 miles per hour. So, you know, we can jump into a Bugatti or a, uh, what is another one, a Lamborghini yes. <laughs> and drive that. That's serverless to me, right? I feel like if you rolled it from scratch, you're driving a hand cart, right? You've got mm -hmm. horses in front of you. You're moving 25 miles per hour. Um, personally, I would rather drive a Lamborghini that goes 200 miles per hour or 300 miles per hour uh, than horses. So yeah. unless I was on vacation, that was the point. You know, so, <laughs> yeah. Indeed. What do you think of that? Yeah, no, I think there's so much, there's so much opportunity to leverage the work that, you know, like AWS and Google Cloud and Azure already have set up and are willing to do for you that, you know, it really gets to a point where you don't, you have to really think about why you're trying to reinvent the wheel, mm -hmm. why certain companies are trying to, do it themselves rather than use these services. Um, and there's also like third party services like serverless framework that you don't want to get um, completely linked up to one company. For certain reasons, there, okay. there are even options for you not to have those problems as well. As this industry is growing, we're seeing just more ability for people uh, to make their choices and to have more choices. Mm -hmm. I think fully managed is one of the strongest uh, sort of like value propositions these like serverlessness have. Mm. Yeah, no, it's interesting. So what, uh, for those uh, viewers who don't know, what Josh just brought up is interesting because uh, he's talking about multi-cloud, right? So when you talk about multi-cloud, mm -hmm. it's the fact that, you know, people don't want to be locked in, right? Um, if I told you you're forced to buy Starbucks coffee only for the rest of your life, you'd be like, ah, no, thank you, right? And so it's the same thing with Amazon. If at some point Amazon shifts their model and they raise the prices, you want to be able to say, you know what? It's been great, but... <laughs> Adios. And the problem with it is that, you know, this is what's called vendor lock, vendor lock in, right? Yeah. So people don't want to be locked in. So to, to not be locked in requires a certain level of automation and forward thinking, right? And so something like a serverless framework, which serverless gurus actually partnered with the serverless framework. Um, the, the big thing to understand there is that it can achieve multi-cloud deployments. Mm -hmm. So you can write your, your cloud function one time and deploy it to Microsoft Azure, uh, to Cloudflare, to uh, IBM, um, AWS, Google Cloud, all these things, right? And so uh, to be able to do that takes a lot of extra work on the serverless frameworks part, right? They have to be able to link these things together based on one key property yeah. inside of that, um, that file that you have to write for the serverless framework, right? So there's a section called provider and you switch provider from AWS to Google Cloud or to Microsoft Azure, mm -hmm. and you make a couple more minor tweaks and you can redeploy it. And so that's really powerful and good to understand. Um, and it's just a whole nother layer yeah. to the value add here. Yeah, exactly, you can, you can have it all. You can have it all, plus more. <laughs> <laughs>